Hey everybody, it's Mackie again. Um, I wanted to talk about my uh, how my personality was, how my attitude was towards the world and towards people when I was um, an indoctrinated sleep Jehovah's Witness. Um, I'm kind of ashamed at how I actually was. Like, I was very judgmental. And looking back, I, I hated that about myself. Um, like, how dare I be that judgmental towards other people or, you know, um, other situations. Like, the, the organization teaches that you stay away and look at people who have different beliefs than yours. You know, they, they want you to look at them as bad or they're, they're being misled by Satan, the devil, you know, and, um, they, they, whoever, who, who, you know, hate what Jehovah hates, basically. <laughs> Jehovah hates everything, if that's the case, okay. Um, you're supposed to have a dislike towards people who, uh, have same-sex relationships um, you're supposed to hate Christmas you're supposed to hate Halloween you're supposed to hate ugh, all the holidays you're supposed to hate Mother's Day now that's just the holiday that I just couldn't freaking hate I'm sorry I, I every every Mother's Day I would you know hint hint post a little something about my mom and my dad I'm sorry I need to pay homage to the people that gave birth to me, <laughs> you know, but yeah, how could you not, why, why, what, why can't we celebrate Mother's Day, Father's Day, they're the ones that put food on your table. You know, your mother or your father or whoever your legal guardian is. The one that, that raised you. Your grandparents, you know. They're the ones put a roof over your head. They're the ones that uh, raised you to try to be a, you know. They try to raise you as good as best as possible. Those who have had, uh, you know, pretty good upbringing. So how come? I can't praise. So, so Jesus and Jeho uh, not even Jesus, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah is the one that gets all the praise and all the glory. So, what's the point of Jesus even being there? You know, like <laughs> seriously, like serious. Jehovah gets all the credit. He's a, and 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 the Bible says that he's a jealous God. Well, <laughs> man. How jealous can you get? Can't you 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 can't even you can't even give thanks to your mother or father for goodness sakes. You know? How could I possibly hate that? Now there are holidays that I do have a little bit of an opinion about. Um such as Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, uh Christmas and things like that. Um but and then let, let let's talk about let's talk about in the Bible where it says men who lie with men will not inherit God's kingdom. Okay. Um seriously. If if God is the one that created the desire in certain people to like the opposite sex why would he go then and go and destroy that same person like it, it doesn't make sense and deep down inside even though i was told not to like gay people i actually really really do they are so cool you know they're so they're they're the most they're the least judgmental people that i've ever met you know I knew a couple of uh, gay guys in high school, and they are—they were some of the sweetest, kindest people. You know, 
but the organization tells you to uh, hate, you know, homosexuality. My thing is, all the things that's going on in the world today, you got all of these earthquakes, all of these people in Puerto Rico that have no power, you know, you got, you had the hurricane in, in Houston, you had all of these shootings and killings going on, you know, and in, in Vegas, you have all of these injustices that, uh, are going on you have all of this racism going on in the world today but the organization is worried about who somebody's sleeping with at night like where is the where is the organization's like priorities where all they can do is pray for the people that that have suffered all of this injustice and all of the, these natural disasters you know that's going on in the world but they so interested in who you're sleeping with or whether or not you're touching yourself <laughs> or not. I think it's more of a disgrace that the organization is, is not even helping out with any of these disaster reliefs like they claim they are, but they're really not. They have so many class action lawsuits against them that your 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 worldwide work that your don your little donation that you think is going to the worldwide work is not going to the worldwide work. It's going to those sixty six million dollar class action lawsuit that they got spanked on them. You know, that's why they're shutting down most of their print prints. That's why they're you know shutting down on a lot of things as was mentioned uh, at the annual meeting, I will post a link to a couple of videos that actually had some pretty good reviews. Um, John Cedars, AKA uh, Lloyd Evans had a good review. Kim Mackey had a good review. Uh, What's Up Watchtower had a good review. So I'm gonna post those uh, on, and so you guys will know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. And also uh, I will post a video from um, Alexander James explaining into further detail about the $66 million uh, class action lawsuit uh, that victims are suing Watchtower for uh, sexual abuse cases that they're not taking care of properly. Um, but yeah. So anyway, like I said, um, going back to being judgmental i was taught to be like that i was taught to be judgmental no. i was taught to not speak to disfellowshipped ones and i felt so bad but i i felt like okay well i have to do this otherwise jehovah will destroy me that's that's the underlying cause for everything that jehovah's witnesses do they're scared to die at armageddon that's that's why they do everything they go out of service because they're scared to die at armageddon you know, they, they shun um, disfellowshipped or faded ones, disassociated ones, because they don't want to die at Armageddon. They avoid holidays because they don't want to die at Armageddon. They avoid dating people outside of the organization because they're afraid Jehovah is going to kill them in Armageddon. It's just, it's, it, that's the underlying reason why Jehovah's Witnesses do what they do, because they don't want to die at Armageddon. Now, when you, if you are a non-Jehovah's Witness and you've never uh, been one, you're gonna be like, "Wow, really?" So they're just spending their their, their entire life just being scared all the time. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly it. They spend their entire life always scared of everything. They're always scary of everything. And I remember one day, uh, I was a really small child. And, I, and this is the sad, I, I, I felt sad, I felt bad, because um, an elder's daughter got disfellowshipped, and then he stepped down. Uh, usually when an elder's child, or any, any member of the family that the elder is responsible for, um, 
if they do any kind of wrongdoing and if they get disfellowshipped or reproved or something like that uh chances are the elder has to step down you know it's 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 a it's a uh image thing you know to the congregation because members of the congregation are judgmental towards each other too they, it's not just uh passing judgment on worldly people they pass an even an even more sickening amount of uh judgment towards their own people because they figure you know they put everybody on a pedestal everybody's supposed to be perfect and, and if you do one wrong or one bad thing such as maybe have sex before you get married you look you're looked at as some sickening individual you know so one day when i saw the elder's daughter who was disfellowship me and my mother were at the store um i think we were at walmart or something or at the grocery store i can't remember it was so long ago i had to have been about nine or ten years old at the time um and i saw her and i got excited you know because i hadn't seen her in a while and i said hi and then my mother she kind of like shook me a little bit and i'm like oh and i said oh really loudly and that kind of made her frown the the disfellowship uh young girl she had to have been about she was probably 19 20 years old at the time and um that kind of made me feel bad like man i can't say hi to her you know i mean this organization ain't got the sense that nature gave a child you know children aren't the most uh non-judgmental uh people you know when they're young because nothing nothing has been taught to them nothing hateful you know has been uh ingrained in their brains yet so that that's when i was like man I don't want to be disfellowshipped and for a long time I didn't want to get baptized because I didn't want to be like her but um, eventually I was convinced to get baptized by my mother and by the elders to get baptized and that's when you know and it was during high school so of course did i go to prom no did i go to certain homecoming dances no i didn't you know my mother wouldn't let me go i was just like uh you know anyway fast forward to today i i'm no longer i'm no longer that judgmental person that i used to be i i don't you know look at people any different you know everybody is gonna live the way that they're gonna live and I ain't nothing nobody can do about it you know I have no problems with who sleeps with who I have no problems with with interracial dating I have no problems with same-sex relationships you know just let let people be like why are you judging these people for what they want to do you know and it's just it's sad i mean because you have people that are witnesses and non-witnesses who judge people for for that same reason but uh, i'm looking at the world through totally different eyes now you know um i i have a family member who does who who's gay and uh, he does drag queen shows and um you know i i, I wouldn't go but next time i i visit i may just see one of his shows you know because i've never been to a drag queen show before i've never even been inside of a, a gay bar or anything like that you know just just for fun you know i'm i'm not even gay i'm straight as a surfboard <laughs> but you know it's just it, i like to you know just discover what other people like to do you know as a job winner is everything is so rigid you you can't explore nothing other than what the governor body tells you to explore which isn't much but nothing outside of <laughs> jw.org so um yeah i i i appreciate my husband even more too because 
when I was highly indoctrinated, you know, I used to get mad when he would be too tired to go out of service with me on Saturday mornings because he had such a hard week at work. You know, and I and I used to be like, oh, you're putting work ahead of Jehovah. And, you know, that that used to cause arguments. And uh, now now that I look back, I feel I kind of feel so bad because it's like, man, he's really, really, really a good person. You know, he's just providing for his family and working. But if you but if you look at him from a Jehovah's Witness perspective, oh, he's not putting Jehovah first. Oh, this and that. And, the other. and I remember we had a shepherding call and you know the elders were just pointing fingers at him and uh you know this, this it's because you know we we quote unquote needed quote unquote spiritual guidance or whatever and when when they were you know just constantly scolding him about well, you need to take your family out of service more you need to take them to the meeting more because if you don't they're not going to do this and that and the other and you know you're going to lead your family to a path of you know destruction and this and that and the other and I'm just like that's when I started waking up I'm like you know what this isn't even cool that how they're browbeating him like this. And I was starting to get upset. I, 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 I really wanted to just stand up to them and say, get the freak out of my house. But at that time, you know, I, I was still indoctrinated. You know, you don't stand up to no elder, you know. And so after that quote unquote shepherding call was over, that, that wasn't no damn shepherding call. That was a browbeating call. You know, it's like they make you feel worse after the shepherding call than, than you had felt before, you know, but now, but now, you know, I'm looking at him totally different. I'm not looking at him as a Jehovah's witness. I'm looking at him as a man and I'm looking at him as a husband. Okay. That's how I'm looking at him as. So I'm, I'm looking at people differently and, and it's more of a positive light than a negative light. And that's what I appreciate about, uh, waking up you know, from the indoctrination, you know, they, they're talking about Jehovah's people are loving and Jehovah's people are happy, but at the same time, they're some of the most judgmental, hateful people, you know, if you're so loving, why do you shun your family member because they have a difference of an opinion and they decide that they don't want to be a uh, Jehovah's witness anymore? You know, why, why is it that you uh, won't even answer the phone? They could be they could be seriously hurt, you know, they could have died, but you wouldn't know because you didn't answer the phone when they needed you. And vice versa. They they probably wouldn't even know if you died because none of their Jehovah's Witness family members contacted, you know, the worldly relative that they that the witness because because I've 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 seen lots of posts on Facebook and I've seen uh, lots of videos where Jehovah's Witnesses don't even contact their disfellowshipped family members if if a Jehovah Witness and their family died they have to find out through the you the obituaries in the newspaper <laughs> you know that's if that's not the most bogus way of finding out something like seriously I have a brother who's faded but there is no way in hell that I would ever ever shun him even when I was indoctrinated I did not shun him at all neither did my mother she didn't shun him either you know, they, I mean, they, they, they limited their conversations, but if my brother would, uh, call, she'd answer the phone. I mean, seriously, if my brother called me, I'm answering the phone. I'm answering the phone. I don't, I don't care what these elders say. I don't care what they, what they're talking about or what the organ, it's not even the elders, it's the governing body, you know, because a lot of the elders are misled, but they don't know they're being misled. Um, and some of them do know. But they, but they, they don't do anything about it. So yeah, it's just it's a very very screwed up organization, you know. If I had known what they were doing behind closed doors before I got baptized, <laughs> me and a lot of other people, you know, <laughs> we wouldn't we wouldn't I wouldn't have immersed my entire body in that water, um, you know. So yeah, so that's that's what I wanted to vent about. I, that was just what was on my mind, um. You know, just just the high amount of judgment that's in the organization <clears throat> is ridiculous. And Jehovah's Witnesses claim that they're not judgmental. Well, I didn't think I was judgmental either until I woke up. And then I'm like, man, I hated, I hated that person that I used to be. And my mother was the same way. We didn't know, we didn't know how judgmental we actually were. But now that I'm looking back, I never, ever, ever want to be that person ever again. 
you know, that per the person that I was before. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to be like that again. That's a terrible way to look at the world. You're just looking at everybody with your nose up. You know, you think you, you know, better than everybody because hey, I'm gonna make it into Armageddon. You're not gonna make it into Armageddon because you, you are gay or you're sleeping with uh, the same sex. You're gonna die in the lake of fire at Armageddon. This is how I used to think, and I, I, I almost threw up as I said that right now. I'm like literally getting nauseous. I'm literally getting nauseous. Because that's how I used to think. Every Jehovah's Witness that's a sleeping indoctrinated thinks that they're better than everybody else. They may not admit it, but they know they are. They're like, hmm, everybody's going to die. I'm going to make it. Yes. Mm hmm That's how they think. And it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible. But like I said, I'm glad I don't think that way anymore. Um, I'm free of that judgmental thinking. So, uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this rant that I uh, needed to talk about. This is Mackie J. Jones. And like I always give people at the end of my um, uh, videos, always question everything. Always dig deeper. And always do research. You know, don't limit yourself to what you've been taught your entire life. Please explore. There's more to the world than just, you know, what you've been taught your whole life. Question everything. And don't be afraid to ask questions. All right, this is Mackie J. Jones, and you guys have a wonderful uh, day. <laughs>